Hi, it's I did make a video about um, inflating a mesh or uh, thin it. Um, normal the, the tools used for this are point normal move and smooth scale. I'm gonna compare both and also introduce another one and try to explain what's uh, under the hood. Um, so I'll use as a, an example object uh, this cube with some steep angles with some um, oblique angles and with some divisions uh, I, I also have here displayed the vertex normals vertex normal is basically an average of the surrounding polygons on the vertex and so let me just start here with the point normal move so this is what I get by thin in or inflating um, the mesh. I'm just going to use 300 millimeters for now. Okay. Uh, now, get smooth scale. I'm going to use 173 millimeters. I'll discuss the inputs later. Uh, I can do this with a smooth scale or the other two tools. I can use um, Move plus, right mouse button. There's no numeric input in this one. Okay, but it's, it doesn't sign. I can also use um, multi shift. Multi shift require, requires an open mesh, so I'll just select one polygon and then invert the selection so every polygons are selected but one. And I'll use the same inputs and on the shift. I'll use point normals. Okay. So I'm just I just need to dis dissolve those points there. So dissolve, and now I see that all three solutions uh, do the same thing to, to the mesh. So I'll just need one for now. Um, they both uh, move uh, displays the the vertices along their normals. As you can see here, so they just give different um, distances along the normal. Uh, for example, um, with smooth scale, the distance along the vertex normal would be the same all, all the time. So let me just uh, call for frame. So here, the distance will be. 173 and here it will be 173 and in here it will be 173 so it's constant with smooth scale uh, you have a constant offsetting along the, the vertex numbers uh, with with point normal move uh, it's different basically it will be more active on it will give the full distance that you put in the input on flat areas. So this is a, a flat area here, and I got 300. Oh, oops. This is a flat area here, and um, I'll get 300 millimeters. That was what I gave on the input. But for example, here I'll give 94 millimeters. And it's going to happen because. Um, the way it works, it will basically uh, kind of um, smooth out on steep angles and be more active on flat angles. Okay, well, the thing is that uh, both of uh, these solutions kind of screw up my polygons normals because they work on vertex normals. And well, sometimes I would uh, like to keep my polygons uh, in the same direction they have. So the third solution uh, I'm going to introduce uh, will basically do that. So I'm going to use multi shift again. But this time I'm going to use I'm going to bevel my uh, opening, my polygon that I use has an opening for multi shift. Invert the selection. And instead of point normals, I'm going to use contour. I'm going to use 100 millimeters. And as you can see, I basically offset it. I can offset it in too. Uh, in this case, I'm going to offset it out. 
I just need to dissolve these points. Okay. And here you can see it's basically the same distance surface wise everywhere. So, uh, why did I have uh, different inputs? Well, basically, I did so so that in all these three solutions, uh, they all had the same uh, results on 90 degree angle corners. Um, I think it's a good midpoint. As you can see, each of these three solutions comes out in different areas. And, well, let's see how they work. So, you got the object, you got the cage of each solution, and the the input for each one. So on contour I got 100 millimeters which basically will put the new surface 100 millimeters distance from the old surface like uh, we, we saw before and on smooth scale I used 173 which is basically square root 3 times 100 um, so it will move them along the normal 173 millimeters everywhere. So it's the same distance here, same distance here, and same distance here. Okay, and then we got point normal move, which is quite different uh, from the others. Well, basically, what I figured out it does it's at the vertex, it will put a vector for each polygon. It's, it has surrounding it, so I got four polygons here, but these two have the same direction, just like this one. So it's just two directions here, 300 millimeters each. So 300 millimeters each, uh, and then these vectors are kind of averaged uh, in the middle. And if you if I load the cage, you can see that's where the point normal move is going to to hit. So, same here on this uh, a bit more three dimensional example. So, I got this vertex, these three directions with 300 millimeters each, and then they average out here. Okay. So, why would I use each one of these solutions? Well, this one I would use, of course, to get a, a nice clean uh, offset. There's some issues with some uh, intermediate points on the divisions uh, when you push the, the levels too much, but well, generally speaking, it's gonna get good results. Get good results. Um, this one, uh, split scale, I use for baking um, of normal maps and such in a software called XNormal uh, because it gives me the cage. X normal uses cage uh, for 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 that. Uh, and basically it, what it matters is that the vertices of the cage are uh, displaced along the vertex normal. And in this case I, I could also use a point normal move, but I prefer this one because point normal move since, since it's it's puffier, it's gonna give a, it's gonna inflate more. Um, it will give self-intersection uh, of the cage, and that's a bad thing. So I get this. I use this one for um, baking maps. Um, and this one, uh, well, this is this is a good one for um, when you want to smooth out of the mesh uh, steep angle. So you get this steep angle here, and since uh, point normal move will, will be applied more on flat angles. Uh, it will make the, the steep angle less um, less noticeable, so that's what I would uh, use it for. Um, of course, it, it will it will give a puffier, uh, more inflated look to, to the mesh so if you want to use subdivision after after uh, probably give uh, more roundish results. Um, so. I'm just just got a, a kind of complaint slash bug report about uh, multi shifts contour. This one uh, 
it's broken in Lightwave in some situations. For example, here I got this torus. I'm just gonna twist it a little bit just so the polygons are not so plain. I'm gonna do some uh, cuts. And like other things in Lightwave, Multi Shift doesn't seem to like uh, cuts, new geometry. So I made these cuts here. And now I'm gonna use multi shift. So bevel in, multi shift. And when I use uh, the shift, the mesh explodes. Uh, you can see that the new cuts, it's where the problems happen, and the cut is slide. So this one, this one, and this one, they slide a little bit. You can see them dancing around from left to right, uh, but this ones, well, they really, they're gone. <laughs> they just gone. Um, so it's a shame this happens. I hope New Tech, New Tech fixes it because uh, this is a great tool. It's, uh, it's the only way I know to do this kind of operation. It's with multi shift, and it's a shame if it gets broken with this because we, when we're modeling, we're cutting the mesh all the time. Uh, so it's it's bad. Uh, I'm just gonna finish it up. I'm just gonna review each one by applying it to the um, to this mesh. Uh, so I've got some interesting things going on. So I'm just gonna use point normal move here. 200 millimeters. And this is what happens. Okay. I use smooth scale, 172 millimeters, and this is what happens. Okay, and last, I use multi shift, 100 millimeters, millimeters. Yes. Okay. Just invert, flat point, dissolve. And this is what um, what happens. So nice offset. Okay. Hope this uh, helps you out to understand if each of these operations. Um, have a good day. Cheers.